Are you now between Megan and Malignant? Are you now only doing bonkers horror? <laughs> I like to think more that I'm doing horror films that are not afraid to sort of push the boundaries, um, but that still play within, you know, that sort of commercial genre space. But really, you know, it's just me growing up loving all kinds of horror movies. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done my time in the haunted house genre. I've done my time in sort of like the ghostly sort of space. So I, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm always trying to expand and just kind of push my horizon. And, uh, and I think that's the great thing about the horror genre is it really lets you kind of free you up to try things and do things. And that's the most important thing for me is like just trying to stay original and, and, and you know, and even if I'm inspired by things that I love, I want to find an interesting new way to do them. Okay, but I still want to say bonkers horror. <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from that term. I've, I've been using that thro thrown around quite a, <laughs> a lot. Um, I was just talking to Gerard, and he said that you're already talking about a Megan sequel. <sighs> Gerard, what does he know? Um, I, I don't like to talk about sequels. Um, uh, so early on, the movie isn't out yet. Uh, I'm just, just only because I'm superstitious. Okay. Um, but what I will say to that is, like any of them in my movies, you know, like whether it's you know the Conjuring universe or Saw or Malignant or you know or Megan here is, you know, we like to think of a bigger world, right? It, it, it's about for me, it's about kind of sort of creating the world and kind of knowing who the characters are, where where the story could potentially sort of go. And, uh, and then sort of like building this bigger world and then going into that and go, okay, I'm telling this particular story, but I know other stuff that's going on. So if we're fortunate enough to have sequels, then uh, we have an idea of where we want to go. Any thoughts about maybe uh, Megan versus Annabelle? <laughs> Two separate studios. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you never know. Yeah. Um, um, now, can you tell me a little bit about your partnership with uh, Blumhouse, mm -hmm. and is there any um, IP that you're really interested in tackling that Jason Blum has? Well, um, it, it's obviously very early on, and there's um, you know not a lot I can really speak to at this moment, but to answer that question, um, hell yes, of course, yes. And, and obviously not just at Blumhouse, um, you know, with Universal as well. Mm -hmm. So that, that's about to the extent I would say. Oh, you're <laughs> killing me. Um, what about uh, Conjuring 4? Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, we, um, we're working on it right now. Um, you know, we, we, we actually, you know, we, with the Conjuring films, uh, you know, we, we, we're very precious about and so uh, so we kind of want to just take our time to make sure we get it right and to make sure like the emotion of the Warren stories that we want to tell and moving into and potentially wrapping up you know we just want to make sure that it's the right thing the right story that we're telling with. Wrapping up does that mean that this is going to be the final Conjuring movie? We never know you never know we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about the decision to make her part puppet, part CGI, part human, part a little bit of everything? Well, what I would say to that is, you know, is we, and again, to Gerard's credit, he really kind of wanted Megan to feel as real as possible. And, uh, and, and that was where I sort of worked with Gerard to kind of go, we, we want her to feel as real as possible, but also at the same time, we still need to remember that she's a doll. And so we don't want to go too far that direction as well. And, you know, the doll aspect generally is what makes her kind of, ma makes the killer doll genre, you know, or, or, or the creepy doll genre creepy because, uh, because it's clearly an, an, an inanimate object. It, it's a plaything, it's a doll. But the fact that this plaything could have a life of its own is what makes it, makes it scary. And so I think, you know, I would say for the first time that the idea of that uncanny valley actually really helps a movie like Megan. It actually makes her, makes her feel creepy to be sort of like in between real and not quite real. Can you talk a little bit about casting um, Alice and Williams? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I love Ellison, and I mean, we all do. Ellison um, has a history at Blumhouse, and uh, and so you know, so you know, from the get go, we we thought of her for this role, um, just because you know we think Ellison's very, she's perfect to play someone who uh, is very career driven, very smart. You know, she needs to do what she needs to do to kind of create, you know, to be this programmer that she is. But at the same time, she also has this sort of softer side. And, uh, and, and we felt like it could be a great sort of contrast to see her pulling the softer side out of herself to be, you know, the parental guidance to Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think um, me, 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 uh, um, Alison is perfect for that. How did you go about finding Katie? I mean, with young kids, it seems like it's very hard to find the acting chops. Yeah, I, I mean, Violet is incredible in this. Um, you know, just, you know, we, we, we do our research. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad we, we found her because she, she does, you know, because so much of the movie is built around her emotion with the doll. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so if she didn't really work, then, then the movie wouldn't work either.